Section 33 of The Aesop for Children. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jill Ingle. The Aesop for Children by Aesop. The Fox and the Crow. One bright morning, as the fox was following his sharp nose through the wood, in search of a bite to eat, he saw a crow on the limb of a tree overhead. This was by no means the first crow the fox had ever seen. What caught his attention this time, and made him stop for a second look, was that the lucky crow held a bit of cheese in her beak. "'No need to search any farther,' thought sly Master Fox. "'Here is a dainty bite for my breakfast.' Up he trotted to the foot of the tree in which the crow was sitting, and looked up admiringly, he cried, "'Good morning, beautiful creature!' The crow, her head cocked on one side, watched the fox suspiciously, but she kept her beak tightly closed on the cheese and did not return his greeting. "'What a charming creature she is!' said the fox. "'How her feathers shine! What a beautiful form, and what splendid wings!' Such a wonderful bird should have a very lovely voice, since everything else about her is so perfect. Could she just sing one song? I know I would hail her queen of the birds. Listening to these flattering words, the crow forgot all her suspicion and also her breakfast. She wanted very much to be called the queen of the birds. So she opened her beak wide to utter her loudest caw, and down fell the cheese straight into the fox's open mouth. "'Thank you,' said Master Fox sweetly, as he walked off. "'Though it is cracked, you have a voice, sure enough. But where are your wits?' The flatterer lives at the expense of those who will listen to him. THE ASS AND ITS SHADOW A traveller had hired an ass to carry him to a distant part of the country. The owner of the ass went with the traveller, walking beside him to drive the ass and point out the way. The road led across a treeless plain where the sun beat down fiercely. So intense did the heat become that the traveller at last decided to stop for a rest, and as there was no other shade to be found the traveller sat down in the shadow of the ass. Now the heat had affected the driver as much as it had the traveller, and even more for he had been walking. Wishing also to rest in the shade cast by the ass, he began to quarrel with the traveller, saying he had hired the ass and not the shadow it cast. The two soon came to blows, and while they were fighting, the ass took to its heels. In quarrelling about the shadow, we often lose the substance. The miller, his son, and the ass. One day, a long time ago, an old miller and his son were on their way to the market with an ass which they hoped to sell. They drove him very slowly, for they thought they would have a better chance to sell him if they kept him in good condition. As they walked along the highway some travellers laughed loudly at them. "'What foolishness!' cried one. "'To walk when they might as well ride. The most stupid of the three is not the one you would expect it to be.' The miller did not like to be laughed at, so he told his son to climb up and ride. They had gone a little farther along the road when three merchants passed by. Oh ho what have we here they cried respect old age young man get down and let the old man ride though the miller was not tired he made the boy get down and climbed up himself to ride just to please the merchants at the next turnstile they overtook some women carrying market baskets loaded with vegetables and other things to sell look at the old fool exclaimed one of them perched on the ass while that poor boy has to walk the miller felt a bit vexed, but to be agreeable he told the boy to climb up behind him. They had no sooner started out again than a loud shout went up from another company of people on the road. "'What a crime!' cried one, to load up a poor dumb beast like that. They look more able to carry the poor creature than he to carry them. They must be on their way to sell the poor thing's hide,' said another. The miller and his son quickly scrambled down, and a short time later the market-place was thrown into an uproar as the two came along, carrying the donkey slung from a pole. 
a great crowd of people ran to get a closer look at the strange sight. The ass did not dislike being carried, but so many people came up to point at him and laugh and shout that he began to kick and bray, and then, just as they were crossing a bridge, the ropes that held him gave way, and down he tumbled into the river. The poor miller now set out sadly for home. By trying to please everybody he had pleased nobody, and lost his ass besides. If you try to please all, you please none. THE ANT AND THE DOVE A dove saw an ant fall into a brook. The ant struggled in vain to reach the bank, and in pity the dove dropped a blade of straw close beside it. Clinging to the straw like a shipwrecked sailor to a broken spar, the ant floated safely to shore. Soon after the ant saw a man getting ready to kill the dove with a stone, but just as he cast the stone the ant stung him in the heel, so that the pain made him miss his aim, and the startled dove flew to safety in a distant wood. A kindness is never wasted. End of section 33 Recording by Jill Ingle